Hey everybody, welcome to the third part of my Sega Horror Horror Games on Sega Genesis review Halloween special. Hope your October is going well. And uh, this is the last part in this three-part special. And it's all about the legit horror games on the Sega Genesis. The original horror games. Not, not licenses for games, but the stuff that was made for the love of the spooky shit. You know what I'm saying? Haunting starring Poltergeist is the most unique game in this list. It's an isometric game where you control a ghost named Poltergeist who spends the whole game scaring the crap out of the Sardini family, chasing them from house to house, getting his revenge. Before I even talk about the gameplay, if you chill on the title screen, you not only get a gameplay demo, you get these little screens that give you little personal information about the Sardini family. And they are pretty funny, making the Sardinis out to be greedy and mean. The kids seem like monsters, the mother is vain and condescending, and the father is greedy and evil. It's really funny. The people who made this game clearly have a sense of humor, and I do believe this is the only game that is classified as a horror comedy. Additionally, this game seems to actually have some sort of anti-corporate message to it. The story is actually that Poltergeist died from using a faulty skateboard that was produced by one of Vito Sardini's companies. The entire point and purpose behind the game is for Poltergeist to get revenge on this despicable family. The gameplay doesn't fall under any particular gameplay genre. It's an isometric game where you possess items around the house. The Sardini's wander around to the items you've possessed and then an animation plays in the game scaring whichever character happens to be there. You frighten each character from room to room until they are so frightened that they flee the house. Get all of them to flee the house and the level is complete. The animations themselves are the most memorable aspect of the game. I absolutely love all the crazy things that happen when some objects in the room are possessed. It's really a lot of fun not only to watch what happens but also to watch the Sardini's reactions to the things that are happening, which can range from simply screaming to wetting their pants. I remember as a kid seeing the box for this game at the video store and wishing I had a Sega Genesis so that I could play it. As a dead guy in the game, there are still ways to die. Each time you possess something, or the Sardini's dog barks at you, or the Ecto Beasts show up, you begin losing ectoplasm. You regain ectoplasm by picking it up after the Sardini's flee from the room and leave it behind. Should you run out of ectoplasm, you are sent to the underworld, which looks like the world's largest septic tank. Here you have to collect ectoplasm and when you've collected all of it you return to the house to do more scaring. This game is a lot of fun and pretty hard but unique as all hell and I very 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 much recommend it. The next game in this series requires no introduction. It's a classic that so many people have talked about it's almost pointless for me to discuss. I love this game although I am more of a super ghouls and ghosts kind of guy. It's really hard to beat this game on Genesis. Each level is a horrific masterpiece of game design. It truly feels like an adventure going from graveyards to windmills to a town on fire. Seeing all the strange and monstrous enemy designs is a delight and attacking each problem with all of Arthur's arsenal of medieval weapons is fun. Except for the fire. That shit sucks sucks nuts. This of course is a ghosts and goblins game and is incredibly difficult but ultimately rewarding. It's really hard to say anything other than this is the cat's pajamas. It just looks great, plays great, and sounds great. Although a lot of what's in the game does sometimes harken to traditional horror or horror elements, much of the game is original unto itself. Giant plants, demons, hands that come out of the ground. I love this game and recommend it to any lover of horror. Hell, I'd recommend it to anyone who loved anything. Zombies Ate My Neighbors was published by Konami and made by LucasArts. If that's not a winning combination, then I don't know what is. Although Haunting starring Poltergeist is defined as a horror comedy, I'd say Zombies Ate My Neighbors unofficially falls into that category. This game strikes a similar tone and is clearly a labor of love made by people who love horror movies, especially those old B-movie drive-in flicks. There are over 50 levels in this game, and they all have names like Evening of the Undead, or Terror in Isle 5, or Chainsaw Hedge Maze Mayhem, and all the enemies enemies in the game in some way have a movie counterpart. You get giant plant monsters, clones of your character, zombies, werewolves, mummies, giant ants, spacemen with a flying saucer that shoots death rays, and there's the dudes with the hockey mask and the chainsaws. Which by the way, if a game has a character wearing a hockey mask and or using a chainsaw, then that makes the game technically a horror game. 
And yes, that means that NHL games are technically horror games. You can feel the reverence for the source material that inspired this game to really come through in every aspect of it. From the levels that take you from neighborhoods to Egypt to spooky castles, or the music which has a very Halloween spooky vibe to it. What I mean by that is it's spooky but festive. The gameplay is simple, run through a maze-like structure rescuing people and killing monsters. Once all the people are saved, go through the exit to move on. Enjoyable and uncomplicated. So much of my enjoyment of the game really comes from the enthusiasm that comes through in the game. The developers must have been proud of this as the end credits are just your character running around the LucasArts office talking to caricatures of the staff that made the game. I wish my workplace was like this. Zombies Ate My Neighbors is a truly fun game. And what else is a truly fun game? Undead Line. Undead Line for the Genesis never came out here in the States and I believe this country is lesser for it. The game only showed up in Europe and Japan and it is truly a shame because as a shooter it's pretty good and as a horror game it's really unique that's right it's a horror shmup the story goes along the line of something something dude with magic goes on a quest to fight evil or something point is you play a guy who walks perpetually forward and eviscerates an endless onslaught of horrific creatures hell-bent on stopping him gameplay is crazy it really is a relentless onslaught of enemies coming at you you dodge and weave and use all available means to defend yourself and complete a level you have a shield you can use to block small projectiles you have this spiked ball all that floats around you killing everything in its path as well as a plethora of weapons you can use to kill the evil at hand. My favorite weapon is the fire. Once you get that leveled up all the way you become a giant walking flamethrower. And I just gotta say that being a giant walking flamethrower is very satisfying. There are six levels in the game, at least six that I've played, as the game is really hard and I can't unlock any others should there be any others. The six levels include a forest where you fight giant bugs and plants that come at you from every direction, giving you hardly a chance to fight back. The next level is a cemetery. This is a little bit more on the horror side of things. You have to shoot down tombstones, which spawn ghosts, there are skeletons to fight, and zombies. Lots and lots of zombies. I like this stage probably the second most out of them all. It's raining and very atmospheric. You got a stage called Ruins that has you fighting severed heads and hockey mask wearing Jason Voorhees's. See? Hockey mask equals horror game. I'm telling you. It's true. You get a level called Rock which has you fighting bugs, rock men, dragons. There's the cave level where you fight ghosts, bats, eyes, Dracula, and stuff falling on you from the ceiling. Lastly, there's the drain level. I hate this level. It's so hard. It's relentless. Overall, the gameplay is fast, frenetic, and loads of fun. I highly recommend this game if you can get your hands on it. And that's it ladies and gentlemen. Those are all of the horror based games on the Sega Genesis. Now you might be saying to yourself, hey wait a minute Kirby, you didn't cover Castlevania Bloodlines. Well, next year. But you might also be saying to yourself, Kirby, what about, what about Splatterhouse 2 and Splatterhouse 3? Well, the next video coming up is going to be the arcade game Splatterhouse. And I'm sure you can guess what's going to come after that. <laughs>